The discursive formation called perspicacity is composed of statements in which the cleverness or intelligence of characters with a certain degree of corpulence is questioned, generally, being opposed to that of a thin character. The corpulent minds were commonly represented as intimidating, aggressive, strong and violent, but little insightful, being easily deceived by the thin ones. In almost all 49 sections classified in this thematic category, this pattern occurred. But there were also excerpts that stated the opposite, in which the fat man was portrayed smarter than the thin man. There was a trend towards an increase in this type of thematization over the analyzed period. As an illustration, 12 small passages were selected. In the first of them, from the 1905 film The Omers in the Bricklayers, by Alice Guy Black, one of the policeman characters, positioned in the center of the screen, was composed with an artificial filling in the belly and torso. He and his companion are continually deceived by the Masons. Even though the speech is more irreverent to authority, since the skinny policeman is equally deceived, the unnecessary artificiality used by the director to reinforce an association between body and authority is considered relevant. There is already evidence that this association developed strongly in France, where Alice produced her films. In the United States, where Roscoe Arbuckle produced, the valuation inversion around the corpulence had not yet fixed itself so strongly. In the chubby films, he puts himself in the role of protagonist and safeguards highly positive narrative positions for his character, among which, that of perspicacity. On 1917 Coney Island, for example, he is smarter than his stalker on the water trail. Likewise, in 1918 Out West, he eludes three men. Although it is more frequent, not always however, his characters are intelligent, as in the Rough House. From 1917, in which he acts quite stupidly when trying to put out a fire that started in his room with a mere glass of water. In Buster Keaton, on the other hand, there is total discursive consistency, but in the opposite direction. In his films, the burly big guy personifies a violent villain, but always deceived by Keaton's skinny little character. 
In Convict 13, from 1920, for example, the big guy plays the role of a frightening inmate, while Keaton is the policeman. In 1920, Neighbors, the same basic structure is repeated, placing the same burly actor in the role of the girl's father. Keaton demonstrates the superiority of his cleverness over the corpulent strength and aggressiveness. Likewise, in Hard Luck, 1921, the burly man is an intimidating, aggressive, but unintelligent bandit, losing the fight against intelligence. In the goal, of 1921, the same scheme is repeated, the corpulent being deceived continuously. Or in My Wife Relations, from 1922, in which the skinny character of Keaton deceives the whole family of his wife, including some burly ones, by pretending to be a religious commemorative date when he cannot eat meat so that he can get some peace to eat. This tendency to put a chubby or burly actor in the role of a deceiver is also followed by Max Linter in the 1921 film Be My Wife. Rather than being intimidating and aggressive, however, the burly is portrayed as passionate, but being the same way tricked by Linter's skinny protagonist. A similar deception to the corpulent character's love and lustful instincts can be found in Sailors, Beware. 
in 1927, in which the fat man believes what the skinny tells him, that there would be women waiting for him at the pool. Finally, in Why Girls Love Sailors, also from 1927, the comic duo uses the same basic structure, in which the fat character is strong, intimidating, irascible, dominant, aggressive, but stupid, deceptive, unintelligent. In this case, Hardy plays the captain of the ship, while Laurel is one of the sailors, who deceives the fat man, making him believe that other sailors are playing tricks on him.